My name is Alyssa Washuda. I'm a member of the Cowlitz Indian tribe and an essayist. My project is White Magic, a book of intertwined personal essays. My form conscious essays could be called lyric essays or experimental nonfiction, but I have my own term for this form, exquisite vessel. <laughs> the work of native writers is so often valued by non-natives primarily for the lives and struggles it documents. But when we write, we care about craft. We have always been innovators. A book is like a basket, its form carefully crafted to hold a story. White Magic is a book about land, heartbreak, colonization, and how I became a powerful witch. <laughs> it will be my second full-length book. And while the first focuses on the trauma of multiple rapes and a bipolar diagnosis in my early 20s, this book is about the aftermath, abuse, drunkenness, and eventually sobriety, the reversal of my bipolar diagnosis, and my work to find love and meaning. After getting sober and coming to terms with a life without the escape hatch of intoxication, I looked for pain relief in movies and video games, but instead found overlap with my own life, lands, and pain. Throughout my life, I've found myself surrounded by knockoffs of native spiritual tools and occult trends, like the starter witch kit Sephora briefly planned to sell, sage, rose quartz, tarot cards, and perfume bundled in paper and plastic. In my book, I explore the real spirit powers and desperation-born rituals of my dispossessed and discarded Cowlitz, Cascade, and Appalachian ancestors. I write about the personal by folding in cultural artifacts that are meaningful to me and watching their magical connections appear. Here are a few that appear in the book. Acclamation Satan. The girl who turns into a shark and eats her husband in one of our old stories. The Oregon Trail 2 video game for PC. An amusement park called the Land of Make-Believe the serpent spirit that was driven from the place that became Seattle, a YouTube video of Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham singing to each other, and a magician with the same full name as my ex-boyfriend. My work on white magic was first driven by the question, what is my inheritance from my ancestors on both sides? And then later I began to ask, what moves into false realities let me bear the truth that as a native woman, I am most endangered when I relax into romantic love under colonial rule? I have a full draft of the book manuscript and my literary agent will soon be seeking publication. I conceive of this project as being about more than that. I am making a vessel, yes, and I am also sharing sacred breath when I read my work aloud. I write my essays in part because of the joy of performing them. In a difficult marketplace, we need to find new paths to readers, not just the book being included on lists of anticipated books, not just getting reviews, but connecting through the impermanence of an unforgettable book tour reading. I want to share the deep pleasure of presence we can find when we leave our homes where we sit comfortably sequestered, kept company by Twitter and Netflix and all our other comforts that let us be lonely. I want to look into your eyes and speak to you. Here's an excerpt from White Magic. When I was 14, Riding the bus home from school, a boy asked me if he could cut open my chest, pry apart my ribcage with his hands, and rip out my heart. His name was Salvador, and he was one of a long line of the boys and men I called upon to save me. Sure, I said, so I would please him. He said he was going to wait to open my ribcage. He said, it's much easier to pry apart a ribcage than you'd think. In my head, I started calling him the incubus, something I found on the internet. At night, I kept my bedroom window open and hoped he wouldn't come in with the spring air. Boy turned demon, broad shoulders as vessels for the unfurling of wings. 
As I stood at the door to the woodshop classroom, I watched his hands. If he had opened my chest, he would have found the hole. Bigger than a heart and a stomach. I thought it was an organ, maybe the soul I learned about in Catholic school and imagined as a limp gray sack. The hole had always been there, and when I was little, I filled it with Cadbury cream eggs. In high school, I used it as a hiding place for the NyQuil I drank from the Gatorade bottle in my locker. Later, I would keep all sorts of things in the hole. Whiskey, Vicodin, cheese, a butterfly knife, Nintendo games, teeth, boxed wine, antipsychotics, condoms. Salvador was expelled for knocking over a soda machine and threatening to kill us all. White Magic is a book about the pain of turning invisible to the one I love the most. I wrote it so that I might watch myself heal. I see myself now in all my manifestations. Little witch turned sorceress, body turned ghost, girl turned shark. Soon it will be time to show my once wounded heart to others. I am strong enough to know that there is nothing I do alone. Thank you.